Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. A tarot video for you. Uh, <clears throat> again, I mentioned in my earlier video that I am very tired because my dog is ill. Didn't get much sleep last night, so bear with me. I'm not around for the next couple of days, so I wanted to get these videos done today. So if I'm a little bit all over the place, please forgive me for that. Um, today, I want to do a little bit of a, a tribute video. I think I would like to do a few of these. I, I did one already for the Star Child Tarot because you, you will see from earlier video that it's one of the decks I really, um, I really love that deck. It, it really speaks to me and I love to read with it. It's a pleasure and it has a very unique voice. But another deck that I've worked with for a long time now is and you'll know this deck but I, I'd like to just recommend it to people if if you've been around tarot for a while and you're looking to step into something a little bit deeper I don't know if I necessarily want to say darker but something that can work at a deeper level then everybody in the tarot community knows this deck this is the uh, Cecoli tarot uh, Nicoletta Cecoli is the artist on this deck and that's the little box. I mean, it comes, you can see it's like battered to nothing. This I don't know why I even keep this. This deck is, deserves a tribute. Um, short story first. When I first um, saw this deck, when I want a deck, I will try to research it as much as I can. Just to have, I, I like, before I go spending money, I like to know what I'm actually buying. Um, there is that moment when you get the deck whether it will kind of connect with you or not sometimes it can take a little while and it's wor worth the, you know waiting for that to happen but everybody in the tarot community spoke about this deck and said that it was great for like childhood um, trauma or or just you know I don't think anybody gets through childhood <laughs> unscathed basically and if you do, you know, you're a very lucky person. But everybody in the tarot community said that. But I wanted to wait to see what this deck would mean for me because I've learned over the years that a deck will always be be different for you. It will it will come at you in a different way. But this in this instance, I have found that what has been said in the tarot community about this deck is 100% spot on. Now you could get this deck and you could end up working with it completely differently and that's fine. That is not a problem. I've just found that what has been said about this deck is definitely correct in my opinion. Uh, these are the backs. You've seen it but look I'm going to show you. God you can see the light in my glasses so um, I'm going to show you anyway, okay, uh, go through the deck and some images. Um, it's a little bit battered because I've, I've had it for an age and I love this deck. Okay, first and foremost, the artwork in this deck was not created for the tarot. It was deck that had already been created and she allowed it to be used for a tarot deck. And it just seamlessly connected with the tarot system. It's a perfect example, actually, of a deck that uses um, a, a, the use of artwork in decks. Because I know I got a question one day. Somebody was kind of uncertain about what I was saying around ar the artwork in tarot. And I think if you, you know, if if you do like art, if you, if it if it kind of speaks to you at all, then it adds an element to a tarot deck. And it can enhance the tarot system and the tarot system can enhance the artwork. If that makes sense. The artwork in this is almost um, too kind of saccharine in some respects. It, it, it does look very uh, childish. But the thing about this deck is that if you look at the artwork closely... There's often something very unsettling about the image um, and within the painting itself. And it, 
will just um, unnerve you sometimes. Um, have you thinking very deeply sometimes? Is it a, a deck that I would recommend to beginners? I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it to, you know, if you're straight off the bat coming into tarot, but if you have some experience with the tarot and you know your cards, then I would say go for it. Now, if you are somebody, I, you know, I'm not, disclaimer here, I am not a counsellor or a psychologist or anything like that. I'm just speaking in my own ex experience. But if you're somebody who has had a lot of, um, a lot of childhood trauma, then maybe find a tarot reader who uses this deck um, if you're new to tarot because it can actually really uh, trigger you. And I, I, I'm talking about all sorts of like emotional abuse, childhood abuse, you know, whatever. And, and it doesn't have to be that um, intense. You know, as I said earlier, I don't think anybody really escapes childhood unscathed as such but it can this this deck can be very very triggering but it is also a deck that will help you work through an awful lot it's kind of got a very when this deck wants to come out and at the moment it is out for me so I know there is something you know um, tapping me on the back of the head it's kind of got a, a strange voice for me. It, it it's like it will it will ask me to you know look at look at the card look look at what's being said here, and I feel yeah I I understand that I I see what's being said, and then it kind of almost pulls me back and goes yeah but you know look look a little deeper, what else do you see down here, and can you see something even deeper than that and even deeper than that. And I always have moments with this deck where I kind of go, oh, I, I didn't see that before. I didn't realize that before. Or I never connected those dots before. And then it kind of um, allows you to move out of that. Once you've seen what you need to see, it allows you to move out of that. So this deck, I mean that's glorious. I absolutely love that. This deck is is very very powerful. And it can be dark, but it's like uh, I just think that's so gorgeous. Like that is perfect perfect devil card. I always look at this and I think I don't know whether it's intentional or not, but he does look like a carrot. Okay? And that's funny initially. But I always think of like, you know, that expression about the, you know, dangling a carrot in front of somebody and they, you know, it'll keep them going. And isn't that almost what the devil on your shoulder is? It's like we sometimes get so bogged down in a goal or something we need to do or something we desire or something that we feel we need to achieve that everything else is forgotten about and we run ourselves into the ground. So... Do you see what I mean about it being, yeah, this deck is just stunning in every way and the artwork is really, really beautiful. And as I said, she didn't do this artwork for the tarot. This artwork is was there initially and then she allowed it to be used for the tarot system. And I, for one, am so glad that she did because I use this deck a lot and I love when this deck comes out for me. And I also know that I'm going to um, really learn something. This card comes up for me actually quite a bit. And I know now over the last few days, I've realized what this card is actually saying to me. Uh, and also this one, the Ace of Swords, which I love this because if you look at her, she is this beautiful little girl. You know, she's she's gorgeous in every way. But if you look at the little lollipop 
but she's eating. That almost looks like blood and it's dripping down her dress. So she's not as sweet as she... For me, this card is like seeing somebody for what they really are or seeing a situation for what it really is, which is perfect for the Ace of Swords. It's that clarity, that moving into a space where you are actually almost having an epiphany because you are now seeing something the way it needs to be seen. You're able to distinguish between what is real and what is an illusion or something you've concocted yourself even. So that's what I mean about this this deck. It will it will take you on a ride and I never do a quick reading with this. I will never just pull a card with this deck. I will always lay out a spread and I will leave it out. And I kind of tend to go about my business. There's a co another couple of decks that I, I do that with as well actually, but this one, I love to do that with this particular deck because it will it will keep coming up for me throughout the day. And in particular, this deck lends itself to journaling. So if journaling is something that you're thinking of, of coming into, oh, you cannot do better than this deck. You really cannot do better than this deck. Another card that's, I shuffled this deck, I swear to God I shuffled this deck and this is another card that's been coming out for me. It's the Knight of Swords the last couple of days as well. And also this one, oh God, I feel like I'm giving myself a reading. This one also, I love this one because this one to me is the King of Swords, but I always feel that the aspect of this King of Swords is brutal. <laughs> just it's it's going to be cold and brutal and it's going to communicate exactly what needs to be communicated whether your feelings are hurt or not my dear that's uh, always that card for me in this deck but you can see I mean that it looks really beautiful but there is always something not quite write about the artwork you really need to kind of sit with it and this you know this is why I'm kind of doing a tribute video to this deck is because this is everything this is this is why I love tarot if you're a person that likes to go down the rabbit hole then you can't do better than decks like these because they will, they'll pull your own story out of you and they'll lay it in front of you and show it back to you. It, so I've heard people before kind of saying they don't like the artwork and I can understand that because it, it, it is kind of a, there's something just so odd about it. But I really, really love it. And the colours are beautiful. In I know the deck is still available. It, this is actually a mass produced deck. Which is so surprising because if, in one way I would have loved if she'd made it as an indie deck. But, but the cardstock is fine. It's Lo, Los Garabillo. Um, you saw the top box earlier on. It's nothing really to, you know, write home about. But the cardstock will last. It's not going to fall apart in you or anything. I mean, I have this deck for a few years. Anytime I'm writing, actually, I, I sometimes pull this deck out as well if I have a problem with characters. Because it'll help me flesh out a character and their flaws and a very, very... I actually think I have a video on that. I did a little video on that. So um, I might do that thing with the cards. So there we go. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. That is the Checoli Tarot. And you know what? Even if you are a beginner, you should get it. Because I think that it will... It will... Um, It'll open doors for you with the tarot as well. And it, it forces you to use your intuition. Yeah, I actually would recommend it for a beginner. It forces you to allow your intuition to take the reins. And that's, hell, it's always a good thing, you know. Um, I love this one. I'm just going to show you a few that I really, really adore. It's beautiful as well. Um, oh, let me see this. How beautiful is that? It's 
the High Priestess. And sorry, dropping everything. Uh, tiredness again, as I said. Um, I had another one here that I really love. Oh, I love this one. That's beautiful. Now, there's one particular one as well. I want to... There's one card I want to show you here. And it really shows you the Five of Cups. Uh, you know, where meanings of the cards are concerned, I think this is one of the best depictions of the Five of Cups that I've ever seen. Because the Five of Cups really is all about heartache and, you know, desolation and upset and just, you know, use whatever word you want to. And I feel that this card really is outstanding when it comes to the Five of Cups. And it did come out for me recently actually as well. But if you see the two figures in it, they're embracing. But one of the figures has the head or upper body of a bird and the other figure has the wings and lower body of a bird. And there's kind of this um, heartbreaking sort of decision that needs to be made. Do they join together so they can create a whole bird? Or do they stay apart? Um, if they join together, they're going to lose something of themselves. And if they stay apart, they'll always carry something of the other person or situation with them anyway. So it's this realization that you can't escape this um, this upset or heartache. You need to learn to kind of live with it and move on. And that's where we go into the Six of Cups, where you try to go backwards, to move backwards, find a place where you can begin from and move forward. Um, so yeah, I just, I think her artwork is just so stunning and this deck is so beautiful and it's been a pleasure to work with and it's one of the reasons why I adore tarot and why I read tarot and it's not just a pastime for me. I mean, it is a system I find that if you're willing to look yourself in the mirror, it can be your mirror and it will, and it can also help you to help other people as well once you begin to understand the system and read with the system and read for others with it. And it can be as frivolous as you want it to be and as fun as you want to be, or it can be tarot and it can lead you down those overgrown paths that you're afraid to walk. So that's that. That's my tribute to the Czecholi tarot. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and I do hope that you will consider this deck if you have a collection or are starting a collection because it is so worth it. Let's pick a card. Why not pick a card? Oh, I'm almost afraid one of the, one of the cards now that have been coming up for me the last couple of days. Okay, let's just see. And I'm going to leave it with you. Oh. The Ten of Swords. And this is one of the cards that came up for me recently. We know what the Ten of Swords is about. Uh, you know, that just overkill, that absolute, utter devastation, um, often mentally, you know, mental anguish. But it's also the end of the suit, remember that. So things can't get worse than this. So from here, things are only going to look up. But I love the depiction in this because there's this little girl who looks perfect in every every way she is a cake <laughs> but she looks perfect in every way she has a beautiful dress she has beautiful ringlets she wants to be seen to be perfect and whether those people are her family or what are around her they are not um letting her be what she wants to be they are stabbing her they are destroying her they are embarrassing her they are um violating her you know there's it's just everything is falling to pieces but um i always think of this card in particular as 
when we try to put on a persona, when we try to be something we're not. And when we try to be something we're not, we often grow ashamed of what reminds us of the real us. Um, and this card always reminds me of that and the mental anguish that can come from that. And that's really what the Ten of Swords speaks to. But also it is the end of the suit, so there is a move forward and up from this. Um, so take that whatever way you want to. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check with Taro. And many blessings to you and talk to you in the next video. Bye bye.